Hello everyone, I'm Chris Barker and welcome back to another album review. Now, before we begin, the way these videos work is that I will start off talking about the album and then I will break it down song by song before finally giving my final ranking of the album and its packaging. I would like to encourage everyone to bear with my ramblings and watch the whole video as I do, as always, have a lot to say. Today we are going to be looking at Rush's debut album, 1974's Rush. Well, later on, Rush would get into progressive rock and eventually synth pop rock. Their first album is a good old-fashioned, straightforward hard rock album, one that is heavily influenced by Led Zeppelin. I've seen some criticize this album as a Led Zeppelin clone, but I really don't think that's fair. Even though I am a bigger fan of Zeppelin than Rush, I do feel like this album has a pretty good identity of its own. There isn't a huge amount of straying from the core sound here. Every song has a good groove to it, with lots of nice guitar heroics, crunchy feedback, epic bass lines, drum fills, the whole hard rock shebang. Led Zeppelin would tend to combine these elements with blues and folk influences, but here Rush is just getting the basics down and they will start to develop their own, more unique style in later albums. I feel like the relative homogeny of this album is one of its greatest strengths, as opposed to a detriment. Listening to Rush here is like dumping a pound of classic rock into your morning drink. That's a mood and tune rock and roll right there. Sure is. Something else I want to note is the slightly different lineup for Rush on this album. In addition to bassist slash vocalist Geddy Lee and guitarist Alex Lifeson, we also have drummer John Woodsy, who would be replaced with Neil Peart shortly after the release of this album. This leads to them having a slightly different sound than the subsequent ones by the band. Finding My Way starts the album off right with some high octane electric guitar followed by some good old rock and roll screaming. Everything clicks into place here for the band. The bass line, guitar, drums, and vocal all sound great. The extended guitar solo close to the end of the song is great as well. Finding My Way also shows off Rush's early talent for composition. The opening of the song works as a very enticing hook and the course of the song is very catchy. Need Some Love isn't quite as good as the album's opener, but it's a good sophomore song. The lyrics aren't quite as catchy as many of the other tracks on the album, and the song cuts off rather abruptly at the end, but other than these minor nitpicks, the song works well. John Woodsy does a lot of drum fills here, but otherwise the instrumentation is mostly the same as on the previous track. It's a well-delivered song in the same style as its neighbors on the album, and while it doesn't stand out as much as some of the others, it does manage to be a good listen when heard in context with the rest of the album. Take a Friend fades in with some great guitar chords that really hook you into the song before going into a full-out groove. Once again, we have very tight playing between Geddy Lee's bass and Alex Lifeson's electric guitar. The song also sees Lee do a sort of call and response with Lifeson, with the lines of the chorus all punctuated with guitar notes or emphasis. Lifeson's solo about halfway through the song is also very good, and fits the mood of the song very well. Take a Friend is another song that has a very catchy chorus, with this one being about the importance of having friends. While the lyrics are a bit awkward, the song is very catchy and the lyrics work really well in this style. Heal Again has a much more brooding, lumbering feel when compared to the other songs on the album. The lyrics are a bit cryptic, having something to do with the passage of time, with the single being unsure of what will and won't change in the future. The bass line on this song is great, and the electric guitar is used in a restrained, yet effective manner. The drum sound feels a bit muted, but this adds to the dark or broody feel when contrasted with the shorter sounding drum heroics on the rest of the album. Here again is certainly one of the more complete filling tracks on the album, and one that features what is perhaps the best instrumental or chord from this early lineup of Rush. Now, before we go on to slide 2 of the album, I want to remind you that if you like this style of album review, to please like this video by hitting the thumbs up button below, hit the subscribe button, and consider watching some of my other videos after this one is through, as all these things help me out a lot. While I generally disagree with others' assertions that this album is a Led Zeppelin clone, what you're doing does make a strong case to the contrary. This song sounds awfully similar to the song Heartbreak or from Led Zeppelin 2, with Geddy Lee's bass line being very close to the one on the Zeppelin song. Now, I don't want anyone to get me wrong here. I'm not claiming plagiarism or anything like that. Led Zeppelin influence has been apparent throughout this album, and usually that's a good thing in my opinion. I think it's just a little bit too much here. 
What you're doing is suddenly its own song. A song whose lyrics lean away from the blues elements of Heartbreak or and keep closer to the rock diss track side of things. The song works well with the album, being in the same hard rock style as the other tracks. Still, the lack of uniqueness makes what you're doing weaker than its neighbors on the album, even while it draws strength from them. The rest of the album's songs sound like great new tracks of the same style as Led Zeppelin, but what you're doing sounds like more of a rehash than anything else. In the Mood has a really good swing to it. The song is hard rock, much like the rest of the album, but it has something of a light touch to it. This is something which is, once again, reminiscent of Led Zeppelin, but it's always struck me as something that's harder to pull off successfully than it initially seems. A large part of it, I believe, lies in the percussion. With this song striking a white balance of hordal rock fills and cymbals with lighter, more rhythmic taps. Now don't get me wrong, I don't know anything about actually playing the drums, but I know what sounds good. John Woodsy is generally forgotten about because he isn't Neil Peart, but this song serves as a reminder that he was a pretty good drummer in and of himself, and his song works well for the types of songs on this album. While the lyrics of In The Mood, or rather typical Come On song, the chorus is very catchy, one of the best choruses on the album, and it is delivered with much energy by Lee. Before and After starts out with a soft and light intro that really sticks out from the rest of the album. We would hear Rush do some your things on later albums, but it's a little out of place here, a small amount of prog in a relatively straightforward rock album. This section is well performed, but even at almost two minutes long, I feel like it does very little for the album, good or bad. After the opening section, before and after breaks into the more familiar hard rock style Rush has used throughout this album. While most of this part is similar to the album's other tracks, of particular note is the Yes sung by Getty Lee in a deeper voice. These feel like an element that is quite a bit newer than the rest of the song, feeling like something you would hear in the grunge songs of the 1990s. This helps before and after feel like it stands out among the tracks on the album as one that was ahead of its time, at least in a certain way. Walking Man boasts both the most memorable lyrics on the album and more great playing from Lush. The lyrics are about the plight of the walking man who feels he has very little time to do anything except to walk his whole life away. While we have seen several great choruses and hooks throughout this album, Walking Man has by far the most memorable verses, making everything add up to a complete lyrical package. Throughout the song, we have good electric and bass guitar work, and a particular highlight of the song is the parts that sound like an alarm and or emergency siren in the background. Alex Lyson's solo is a great addition to the song, and the track ends with a big finale with a drum solo and lots of electric guitar theatrics. This finale acts to land the album off as a whole on a very epic and conclusive note. Walking Man marries the same great playing as the West of Rush's debut to a great set of lyrics, all of which is topped off by a bombastic walking finale that serves to end the album off on its highest note. A very good way to end an album, if I do say so myself. Alright, and that's it for the song by song breakdown. So now, before we go on to my final thoughts on the album, let's look at my final scores for the songs. I give Finding My Way an 8 out of 10. Need Some Love, 7 out of 10. Take a Friend, 8 out of 10. Heal Again, 8 out of 10. What You're Doing, 6 out of 10. In the Mood, 8 out of 10. Before and After, 7 out of 10. And finally, Walking Man, 8 out of 10. Lush's debut makes for a very solid album. While the highs hit here aren't as high as on plenty of other debut albums I've reviewed, there aren't any real lows to speak of. Even the weakest song, What You're Doing, is a great song to listen to on its own, regardless of its unoriginality. And that's to say nothing of the most original parts of the album, such as Finding My Way, Here Again, In The Mood, and Walking Man. These are all great songs and some of my personal favorites in Rush's catalog. What these tracks show is that Lifeson and Lee already have a certain groove worked out between them, and they use this dynamic to make their electric and bass guitar parts sing together in harmony to great effect. The only real downside here is many of the song's lyrics are pretty standard and unpolished. The choruses here are very good, but the voices tend to leave a lot to be desired. Thankfully, Rush would improve on this front on later albums, 
and even then it wasn't that big of a drawback heel thanks to the otherwise excellent composition. Lush also makes good use of the album format, with both the first and last tracks of the album being perfectly placed in the track listing. This album is a thrilling rock and roll ride from start to finish, one that never gets still at any point. This album is very consistent, which is especially impressive for a debut album comprising solely of original material. All of this is in spite of the fact that the band's later, more popular albums don't sound much like it. I know a lot of Rush fans don't like this album that much, compared to their later work, but as a big fan of Led Zeppelin and Civity's work in general, I quite like this. As such, I'm giving this album an 8 out of 10. Sure, John Rootsy isn't as good as Neil Peart, and sure the lyrics are unpolished, but the playing here is on point. And, as I've said many times before, the sound on this is very consistent, with no huge gaps in quality. And of course, to wrap up this video, I do as always want to look at the sleeve, as that is something I quite enjoy doing. So, here you have this kind of nice wash logo, in kind of a hot pink. Nice kind of shadow, kind of adding a 3D effect to it. And you've got against this kind of comic book background, kind of art style, kind of Jack Corby-esque. It's a very nice logo, and a very nice kind of style. I do quite like this album cover. On the back, you have pictures of the band in kind of a similar format in a way. You've got more of the kind of effects, and then you've got, you know, pictures of them that seem to be kind of popping off the, the paper of the sleeve. Really quite nice, pretty good pictures of all of them. They do look awfully serious, they're super rootsy though. Um, and of course, got the track listing and all the notes. And of course, you have the pink logo there once again. As I said in my David Bowie uh, album review of his album Space Oddity, pink is a space age color, so I guess Rush was really on top of things when they had this cover with pink on it. So yeah, there wasn't a huge amount more to say about the album. But still, I do think that this sleeve looks really, really nice on this album. I think it really comes together in a very nice way. You have kind of the maximalism of the hot pink and the kind of shadow, but then you also have kind of a minimalism of just these particles and the kind of white background. So I think it's a pretty good sleeve, and I think it's a pretty good album. So, once again, if you made it this one of the video, thanks for watching, I hope you have a great rest of your day, and please consider watching some of my other videos on my YouTube channel. Thank you, and good night.